Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. This feels like mini extravaganza. It doesn't feel like a regular. Oh, it's because I'm in the studio. New studio. Who dis? Today we are, you know what, we're continuing our mini extravaganza fun and excitement. We're going to be painting up the Green Goblin, um, but I, I feel like we shouldn't be doing him green. Let's do something fun. Let's do something different. I've got a few selections of paint out in front of me, and I was thinking about doing like Red Goblin inspired. Um, if you haven't seen, that's when the symbiote and uh, Norman Osborn merge. Um, so that could be fun. Or we could do like a blackish green, like brackish color Green Goblin. Either one, vote in chat. Let's see what happens. I got the paint on the table. Let's kick it to the mini cam. Let's just like get it on the camera before I switch it, just in case. So right there and mini cam. Let's put some light on him. There was some talk of showing the Green Goblin's revamp card during that stream. Oh, I mean, maybe he's definitely getting a revamp, revamp card. All right, I'm seeing some... I see Brackus, I see Red Gobbo, Black Goblin. I kind of like Black Goblin, Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin is a different character to me. I want to do like a, I really want to lean into the alternate version of, of Goblin. So I think the very first thing I want to do is I want to get some washes out. And the very first thing is I want to put some yellow wash on his skin. And if you watch during Main Stravaganza, uh, this was very much about like helping accentuate the green to create kind of an undertone for that green to grab a hold of and be more lively. This could also let's go either direction if we want to go red goblin. I need your votes. If we want to go black goblin, either way. Red or black. I'm, I'm with you, chat, on whichever you choose. But I like it when chat chooses. Because, like, with all miniature painting, it's all about, like, taking the journey and having fun and just trying something new and exciting. I'm seeing red. 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 Red and black. Lulu the Tick. All right, I guess we're doing Red Gobbo inspired. We're doing Red Gobbo inspired. That means we need a bigger brush. I don't need to worry about skin. I need to worry about his whole caboodle. All right, the goal here will be, once again, we're going to lay on a yellow. This yellow will create like a base layer for us to build our reds on. It's feeling a bit hobgobliny right now. Like I said, I feel like the hobgoblin, hobgoblin to me just feels too, too much different. I, you know, I want to do just an alternate take he's so yellow so I'm streaming in the studio today it's a little weird because I have my thing is over there what color it's not green this is yellow it's a it's just a yellow wash I mixed up it probably looks a little green on screen uh, the Cameras struggle a tiny bit with yellow, but that is definitely something Tony is looking into. I 
I say with confidence. What do we got here written black? Black Goblin, you know, it makes sense. Uh, yeah, I mean, now we're in the red and black, though. We're doing red and black. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it right now. Tony's just in and out in here. This is like mini extravaganza, just behind the scenes action. Is the camera messed up? I mean, it's just rotating. Oh, left the brush in there. Silver. Why not pink? Um, I don't know. Why not pink? Nothing wrong with pink. I want to see how it does smoke. Don't worry, Kango, we're gonna do it. We're gonna put a yellow, uh, we're gonna put a yellow wash on it first. The exact same yellow wash we're using for the, the uh, skin. Then we're gonna put a red wash, then we're gonna do gray, and we're gonna spackle it. We're gonna have all kinds of fun with that smoke. Why red over yellow? Um, it lets the red live a little bit. It kind of uh, creates a, a layer to build off. Um, you know, a lot of painting tutorials are all about like, you know, multiple coats, right? Multiple coats, multiple coats. Um, I do a lot of glazes and washes for my tabletop stuff. Like if I'm painting for a, a competition, I don't typically paint like this. But for tabletop, I paint with a lot of glazes and washes, and I want to. I want to. I don't want to just slop a red on, right? I want. I want to build up a little bit of color. I want to build up some vibrancy, so I mix uh, my. I mix my layers down, so I will put some, you know, I'll put red or yellow down before I put red down, because it builds up those colors better. So you're just kind of building up colors. You're creating those tones in in it. So I mixed a little silver and a little magenta and a little black. We're going to use this for the glider colors. The idea here is I want to push that glider into like some deep colors, deep rich colors. So some deep rich colors, and then that way we can put the glow in the eyes and stuff and it'll stand out more. Did my explanation make sense? You want to know, want to know more about the love he's going to get? Um, I'm not sure I can talk about it, but information is definitely coming. Information is definitely coming. This is nice purple, purpley metal color. That looks pretty cool. How was the time off? Oh, time off was great. Wait, I didn't take last week off. Oh, Marco gave me a bottle of water. Marco's the best. Thank you, Marco. I was dying of thirst and Marco ran to lunch. I'm gonna grab this bottle of water. I need a drink real bad. Oh boy. Oh, a break from streaming. Yeah, we took a break from streaming because we have mini extravaganza. There's a lot. 
We did a lot of streaming over Main Street Auto Games. So hopefully everybody enjoyed it and had fun. I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun teases and reveals. So I'm going to start this darker red into the shadows. So this is just a wash. But I'm going to control it. I'm not going to slop it all over, right? I'm going to use that second brush to kind of control where it goes. And even though that this yellow wash is wet, I don't care. I, I want them to kind of mix and blend and come together. That's perfectly okay to me. We're totally okay with that. I'm just going to use a second brush to kind of keep this orangey red warm color off of the upper surfaces of our red black gabo. This will just create some of those shadows, nice rich shadows. Now I'm kind of curious, what was everybody's favorite Crisis Protocol reveal last week at Mini Stravaganza? Because I got to tell you, I'm a huge, like, I was so excited to do uh, release magic and work on magic. So finally being able to show magic off was super cool for me. And of course, Juggernaut, like, um, I went through my comic collection the other day, and I was inventorying my X-Men collection, because um, I haven't really looked at it in a long time, and I realized there were some issues of Uncanny missing um, in my run that I have started, and um, was going through that, and getting my numbers down so I can head to my local comic shop and maybe pick some of those up that I'm missing. So after coming off mini extravaganza with Magic and Juggernaut and then working on my comic collection uh, inventory, it was, just, it was just great. Just super exciting. All right, what do we got? <clears throat> what brought on Wayne to go all the way back to Pain Goblin? Uh, maybe we got something coming up on Friday, or Thursday, sorry, Thursday. Plus, sometimes it's just fun to go back and paint a new version of something, you know? For me, it's always fun to go back and do something a little different with somebody. Well, what's left cracked? I'm missing something there. What is left cracked? Yeah, Juggernaut Gambit. Magic was super cool. Oh, looking nice says Magic, my favorite character, and looks perfect. I agree. Not, she looks she looks just so awesome. Just uh, just just looks like a total badass. In the the recent Hickman run, there's an amazing scene. I think I talked about this last week at Main Street Again. There's this amazing scene where a bunch of um, um, the brood land and Cyclops is like, you got this, Captain? He's talking to Magic, of course. And she just goes, grr. And I was like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I love it. Just just a badass. Sorcerer Supreme of Limbo. Mm. 
now to now to convince Schick and to give me a full the full Dark Child version. Get it on the schedule. Maybe I'll just get maybe I'll just maybe I'll just sculpt it and not tell him. Then they'll be forced to release it. With the cloven hooves and the horns. Like that that would be super cool. I got my one Schick wish for the month. I don't remember. Uh, is that Schick talking? If it, if it is, I think it's a lie. Because I don't remember getting a wish. Unless it's Schick, Schick talking. He's talking about something that happened today. But I don't know if that's a wish. And honestly, I'm just going to tell Josh about it. And it's going to become a Josh wish. So that's how I get more than one wish. Um, I cheat. Of course. Why wouldn't I? Is this more of a hobgoblin look? Uh, currently it is, but we're going places with this. We're going places with this. Oh, thank you, Iron Man 44. I deserve five a month. You know what? I like you, Iron Man 44. You get it. You get it. We definitely talked about something this morning. Um, and I kind of went crazy and pitched an idea off piggybacking off other ideas, of course. Like, that's the way all good ideas are. You piggyback off other ideas. Um, but I, 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 I love the idea. I think other people will, too. I don't know if it's a wish. I think it's, I think, no, no. All right, we're letting that dry. So this feels more hobgoblin-y right now, but we're not done. Oh, no, we're not done. We're so far away. I heard that AMG has... Well, I don't know what AMG has. We have lots of things. I do look forward to seeing Colossus. Th I'm going back up to the top. Yeah, I Colossus throwing Wolverine is a pure joy to behold. So everybody's like, oh, it feels like Hobgoblin right now. I'm like, yeah, you're right. It does currently feel like Hobgoblin. But we're not done. Oh, no. Oh, no, true believers. We are far from done. I'm going to put a little red into that. Uh, orange wash. I want to touch a little bit of black. That's too much. This is all still wet, which is great. That's what I want. Now I'm going to take some red. I'm going to start putting this in. Over top. Oh, don't believe there's any space for No, in the new office, there's not, there's not public sp visit space. Sorry. So see now, we're putting a bright red 
over top of that orange and that yellow and just get a more vibrant and powerful red, right? Color gets color is something that you need to build up sometimes. So it's very important to kind of create um, some undertones for your paint to work with. Too many secrets for the for uh, anybody to come in. How Iron Man forty four? How long for Hulkbuster ship? I I don't I don't know. Uh, that's a it's a question far beyond me. You gotta think of Atomic Mass. We're like the band and. Asthma Day is the record label. So I don't really I don't really work on that part. You can I'm sure if VK is in the chat, he can give you an expected street date. My life is so far in the future. I work on way future stuff. In the far, far future of Atomic Mass Games. What surprises lurk there? I mean, it's many surprises. You'll be shocked. Uh, da, 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 da. Were you, oh, Slave for Jane, right? Is that, I mean, no. Um, do I plan on revisiting other miniatures to repaint on stream? There's a ton to do, but it's amazing to see. You work through uh, different thoughts on a miniature to follow along. Uh... I mean, we've done a couple. I've, I've revisited a couple, um, but you never know. Like, we could always go back and see characters in a new light and get inspired by something and repaint it. You never know. More red. More red. More red. Not red on the pumpkin bomb, though. Let's not red the pumpkin bomb. Let's put a little red in here. And on the arm hand. Arm hand, whatever. Same thing. Ish. Let's darken that up. A little more red. So Red Goblin's kind of, like his clothes and everything is all one color. So the trick is going to be kind of di differentiate between all these elements. So I think that's where the black is going to start coming in now. Because we need to create definition between the elements.
So I'm thinking we, and I, I didn't paint his little foot stirrups because I knew I was going to make a mess, so I'll clean those up at the end. So let's add a little black to that. Let's start adding some black to the cloth. And this is just going to create some contrast between cloth and skin because we want it all to be red. If you wanted a little green on him, like an object source light, like object source line is a much bigger topic. Um, but it's all about you really got to spend some time learning how light works and developing that eye. But choosing where the light comes from, um, I don't really see light coming from the inside of the eyes because the, the light can't get back on him from the inside of the eyes. It would just be blocked by the frame of the pumpkin. So, but it's all about, if you want to learn object source lighting, like start just studying light. That's where you start. You can cheat a little by trying some airbrushing and just blowing paint that you want on him from that direction, but you have to really work to make that look right. But you could put some green glow in inside the pumpkin eyes for some nice contrast. Just make sure it doesn't look Christmassy. Did I get the worst brush or the worst brush? I feel like I got the worst brush. Once again, I'm just really controlling where that black paint goes. And this will just darken him down on that cloth. I mean, if you want the glow coming from the pumpkins, it doesn't really make sense to me because the light coming out of the pumpkins would not emanate any direction except for straight forward because of the shape of the eyes. I mean, I see a lot of object source lighting that is kind of faked. And so it's like, even though it doesn't work that way, you kind of fake it about and make it look cool. And so rule of cool kind of applies. So if you're into that, that's fine. If you want the smoke to glow, I mean, that's different. So I would choose where the light's coming from, figure out how it affects the colors around it, because green glow over red turns brown. Like, that's another thing is, like, it's... It's really helpful to look at pictures of red objects in green light. You can just Google that and find pictures of what that looks like because it's not just putting green over top. There's, there's actually changes the color of stuff. A terrible blend, but I don't care.
comes this dark lining between his skin and his cloth. Once again, we just want to differentiate between those elements. Get a whole lot of good enoughs on this. Not painting for competition or studio, so I'm a big fan of good enoughs. If you have said this, my brain is like, do you just know the colors for a maze or revisit the comics prior to painting? Um, like, I always look at reference. Reference is the key to all art. That's, that's what I do. I, I remember something, or sometimes, like, before streams, like Shik has mentioned, me and him will talk about what we're going to do on stream, and we'll give each other ideas. Um, but... The goal is always you get the idea and then you, to execute the idea, you go back and you find reference. So I always go back and like find a good reference. It's the way I paint. Even if it was something like I'm intimately familiar with, I would... I always go find reference. Rarely do I paint just blind. Um, mainly if I'm doing like artsy pieces where I'm just kind of making it up and just free flowing and just letting my imagination run wild. But typically anything else is definitely a whole bunch of going and finding reference you know sculptors the sculptors use reference the artists use reference like um, you, if you're painting for the studio you know use reference reference is so vital Mix it together on the palette. Come on in, paint his eyes. I want those eyes to be intense. Just piercing. I want to kick up this, these pumpkins, so I'm going to use some bright orange just to kind of change and pull these pumpkins away from him a little bit. It's all about contrast. We're using such a limited palette. We've, we've, we've used three colors, four colors, not counting... No, three colors, not counting black. Um, so we want to just create contrast. We want to make sure that everything is nice and defined. So just creating some variation here and there. All right, so... Uh, Yeah. 
Yeah, you look at reference all the time. That's what it's all about. You gotta look at reference. It's so important. It's so important. So let's make some scales. I love Goblin. He has those scales. Let me find the right color here. I'm just gonna mix something up. We're just gonna use some little dots to kind of represent scales. I think that needs to be a little more yellow. Something like that. Like I said, this is inspired by Red Goblin design. It doesn't have to be accurate. I'm just just inspired by. I looked at an image of him earlier. I was talking to Shik and I was like, well, I'm thinking maybe black green or I don't know. What do you got, Shik? And he's just like, what about red goblin? I was like, yeah, maybe. And I went and looked it up and I was still kind of waffling back and forth before stream. And then finally I was just like, oh, you know what? I'm going to try it. Like maybe. Well, it depends on if the vo chat voted and luckily chat did. So I think it's a fun experiment. Trying something weird and different on a classic character that even though the costume hasn't been sculpted, you can kind of interpret your the the, the idea yourself. And I think that's such the fun part of you know, like painting Marvel Crisis Protocol is like all these amazing characters and we get this beautiful opportunity to kind of interpret them uh, I don't think I'm allowed to talk about the character adjustments I feel like I'll get in trouble but I feel like also information is definitely coming Those eyes up just a little bit more. What adjustment am I most hyped for? Oh, Hulk, he seemed pretty cool. That was a fun, that was a fun adjustment. That adjustment led to a bunch of other discussions too, so. Which are, so I think that's why my, that one's my favorite, because it led to other discussions. 
and other discussions are always fun. All right, I think we need to put some tendrils of black on our goblin. Just ever so slightly, just to indicate that like symbiote-ness. Not a lot. Just a few. Punch those eyes in the pumpkin, this little white. I really want them to glow. I really want them to pop. And also on the glider. Okay, not bad for 45 minutes. I say a little highlight on his cloth just here and there nothing spectacular we leave the spectacular for spider-man let's be honest I want to frame those eyes with a little orange Make them stand out nice. Whoops, wrong color. Grab the wrong color on the palette. Oh, a series of articles outlining the changes? Yeah. We talked about that a little bit today as well, like how to maybe outline some of those changes and how to approach stuff. I'm going to mix gray and orange together. This is very, very wet. I'm going to dab that on the top of the clouds. Very rough pattern. <laughs> very, very rough. 
and put a little white in that. It's a little wet still, but that's okay. I'm just gonna wet blend that together. Let it wet blend all together. Just mush that paint around. Think about where you want the paint, what the paint's supposed to be doing. Let the paint do its job. Can Juggernaut stand on his own against Hulk? Hmm. It's a solid question. So we're going to use the same red black. We're going to shade the glider. We just got to remember to go back and paint the, uh, the stirrups. Because I did purposely leave those because we were painting the feet. It gets a little messy sometimes. I just want this like red black glaze over top of that purple metal we made earlier. Just to kind of really pull it into that red symbiote feel that we got going on. excited for Juggernaut. I'm, I gotta admit, I'm super excited for Juggernaut. One of my favorite uh, just X-Men bad guys. Um, long, long time ago in the way, way far beyond when I was but a young lad. Um, I definitely uh, I think it's Wolverine 76 Seven maybe. Um, Wolverine faces off with the Juggernaut, and there's this wonderful panel where Wolverine's in a uh, uh, sleeveless shirt and cowboy hat, and he's standing on a bar stool, or he's standing on the bar, not a bar stool. He's standing on a bar. He's got his claws popped in the Juggernaut's face, and Juggernaut's just looking at him like, is this really what you want to do, shrimp? And I absolutely loved that picture so much. It was drawn by uh, Andy Kubert. And um, can we see a size comparison of Hulk, Juggernaut, and Thanos? Um... I would love to do that for you, but I'm kind of like in the studio and I don't have miniatures around me. I'm not in my house anymore. I'm in a studio. I'm for real. Um, the landscape layout of the cards, are we going to get the release of all the previous printed cards and that option so we don't have them? Uh, there is a, there's, there, they talked about that a little bit in Main Stravaganza that um, I believe the plan is ca a card pack. Yes. Uh, but anyways, I, I recreated that image of Juggernaut and Wolverine. I took a giant piece 
um, um, artboard and um, oh, oh boy I was a senior in high school I think and uh, recreated that for one of my final art projects I I took that image and I recreated it um, and I loved it it was the best my teacher totally like let me draw comic book stuff for every art project it was awesome Yeah, the, the new format is for localization. It's a very important step and a very important process. Um, so I would suspect, you know, every card needs to be localized. All right, we only got a few minutes, and I feel pretty good about my symbiote Green Goblin, my Red Goblin. I don't know if anybody in the studio is listening. I don't. Th I don't know if we have a Hulk. Um, I don't know if we have a Hulk, Thanos, and um, Juggernaut easily accessible. They'd have to. They'd have to get into the mini case, and I, I have that locked tight. I don't just let allow anybody in there. Come on. Let's highlight the metals. Red Goblin's glider is not metal, but you know, we're doing what we we're doing what we got, and I love it. Final questions. We only got a few minutes. Get them in, kids. I want to keep this pretty dark, I think. I want to keep the glider pretty dark. They would be. Yeah, Kegel, uh, Triple Lot, um, standing on the bar, Logan was still shorter than... I, that's why I love that image so much. It's just, Logan is so tiny. Like, I mean, canonically, what is he, 5'1"? He's just so tiny. Um, so it's... It was, it, I just love that image. He's just standing there, and he's like... You know, Juggernaut's got that, like, are you really going to do this? And Wolverine's like, yeah. Yeah, I am, actually. So, you know, are you ready? And Juggernaut's like, of course I'm ready. I'm the Juggernaut. Like, did you not know I'm the Juggernaut? I'm the Juggernaut. So just, just an awesome image. Unfortunately, I, just, I don't have that painting anymore. I, I gave that away to a friend. A friend of mine has it. Uh, last time I saw it, it got damaged in a house flood, but he still owns it. So. Somewhere out there that exists. All right, we only got four minutes, and I think I'm pretty much done with this Red Goblin. A little white and yellow mixed together. Do some little dots on the smoke.
especially in the dark areas. Creates that nice contrast, makes it pop. What's going to be the outro song? Who knows? You think I planned that? I have no idea. Who knows? I'm a fly by the seat of my pants kind of guy. Shoot from the hip. Go with the gut. Make decisions fast. So close to done. If you could repose an old character with all that we've learned, who would it be? Man, that's a great question. An old character. I mean, the problem with that is, is like, who knows? Maybe we might do that. So technically, uh, technically, I can't talk about that. Whoops, that was way too big of a paint strip. Let's tone that down. I mean, honestly, I, Marco and I are definitely of the um, mentality like, as soon as we're done with it, we hate it. So you can always go back and make it better. So... I mean, literally everybody, literally everybody. I always have a new idea or, you know, some idea comes along that's like, oh, yeah, that, that, like, or you learn something immediately on the next character, and you're like, well, it'd been nice to know that, you know. On that last one, we just sent off to production. Next time, next time. That's just that's just all part of it. I mean, the great thing about Marvel is there's you, you know, there's so many versions of like say Peter Parker Spider Man that you can always reinvent and go and do something new and fun and different. Spiders are actually the hardest to design, but all right, that's a red goblin. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. In an hour. Did it. Uh, will the characters after the 50 hinted all get new cards? Like, what do you mean by new cards? Updated or just the new layout? Because probably the new layout is probably, probably going to happen. We got to localize it. That looks pretty good. I'm very happy with my Red Goblin. Um, I got the little symbiote tendrils on there um it's got poppy poppy white eyes and all in all just feels terribly menacing and ready for the tabletop love it because that's what it's about it's about getting it ready for the tabletop all right i'm gonna keep my thing from bouncing about let's see here kick it over do i have an outro I have one of these. I have one of those. So remember every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, join us for Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. Pop in tomorrow and check out what Schick is going to be painting up. I bet it's something awesome. So until next time, thanks for joining in and catch you on the tabletop. Red Goblin.